Computing requirements are interlinked because uh, uh, the calculations uses the accounting figures and um, the thought uh, behind the model may have a linkage with uh, that approach as well. Uh, my name is Sheikh Salman. I'm from Anstein Young Ford Roads. Uh, my question is that uh, since this uh, expected loss model is purely based on the management estimates, so every year if I'm going to reassess my estimates, so is it going to be a change in estimate accounting the, every year? Yes, it will be a change in estimate. And elaborated, I, I, for, 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 for the interest of time, I have not included the disclosure requirement. There are many, many disclosure requirements uh, about the estimates used for expected loss model and uh, you know you have to uh, disclose everything on the earth I think to when you use this expected loss model so you know disclosures would be very very elaborate and all the judgments and factors uh, would be disclosed my, my question a simple question to a worthy speaker uh, do you think this IFRS 9 especially has really changed the world for accounting purposes has, uh, sorry? has really changed the world for accounting purposes, except for the nomenclatures. I mean, if you look at IS 39 from classification and measurement perspective, yeah. there were shoes with fair values. Market values used not to be the fair values, and there were concepts of under and over valuation, not the best judge. That was one of the issues with IS 39. And then the hybrid model had an issue of affecting EPS, some things to the PL, something to the equity. Uh, that remains there, more fair value. Again, the market values are assumed to be the best judge of fair values. Equity is still at fair values. For debt instruments, there are two models. And from impairment perspective, even, I mean, this is a cash flow approach. I mean, we have to expect the cash flows, and we have to discount those cash flows. The effective rate is basically the, the post rate of discounting all the future cash flows. So in effect, in substance, do you think something has changed except no, the nomenclature? No, no, no. I think, I think many things, things have changed. But uh, I would say that you know, first of all, um, the, the, uh, the, as far as the expected loss model is very, very different from the incurred loss model. It will, because under the expected loss model means you have to carry provisions against your regular loans, you know, on some methodology, which is not happening at the moment. As regards this, um, the uh, investment thing, yes, actually this, uh, the choice for using uh, gains through OCI is very limited to non-trading investment. At the moment, in a, under available for sale, you can also classify debt instruments and equity both. So, you know, uh, it has reduced, but whether it has achieved the full purpose still be to be seen because a lot of things will come out after the standard is actually implemented and a lot of things will change based on the imp implementation experiences. Well, I think... Uh Two last questions, Asmat and there's one more gentleman. Uh, thank you. Uh, my question is this, uh, general provisioning seems to be quite interesting at the moment. Uh, this, I mean, uh, do, I was just thinking, would that be prudent that uh, if uh, we allocate a general provisioning on the good portfolio, though if we go for the specific provisioning, that would be right, okay. But if you're going for a general provisioning where we don't see, rather, there was no occurrence of any losses on the whole portfolio, there could be in future. But how can we allocate that general provisions to the to, 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 the, to the each loans or specific loans because each loans is with any uh, with a particular industry or and in that particular industry would be related with, with, with their gearing with their economic conditions with their each and everything so it would be very difficult isn't it very yeah. difficult no, no, to, to, to correlate those general <coughs> provisioning with these specific uh, industries and, and the loans in a manner no that's why the journal or this expected loss provisioning is required to be made on a portfolio basis not on an individual loan basis. <clears throat> Initially, the exposure draft uh, did require that individual loans should be on the expected loss model, but this supplement is now saying that uh, you should make that assessment of expected loss on a portfolio basis. And there's still to come, uh, there's ISB still deliberating on what should be the expected loss uh, methodology, 
how should that methodology be applied to individual loans which are individually significant, so which cannot be attributed to a portfolio. So that is yet to come, but for loans which, have, which are managed in a portfolio, which have similar characteristics like auto loans, or mortgage portfolios and etc., for those loans, uh, it is a, a collective assessment about their expected impairment uh, is possible, and that is something which is to be done under the good book on those portfolios. Uh, but <clears throat> you're right that, you know, general, uh, there, you know, I, I just also wanted to add that this, this standard and this exposure draft is not only applicable for loan loss provision, it t talks about all financial assets, meaning if you trade receivable, on that also you have to create an expected loss provision. Now what this mean? This mean is that when you make a sale and you recognize a revenue, then you should also make an expectation of how much of that trade data would turn back bad in times to come and you should book that expected loss provision up front, meaning you should recognize revenue from at net off the expected loss provisions, which is apparently very weird and that is why uh, this exposure aspect of exposure draft is again being debated within the ISB as to as to see how the short-term receivables, like trade receivables, should be <coughs> uh, should use this expected loss model, because uh, conceptually speaking, if uh, expected loss model is applied on the trade receivables, you would see uh, you know uh, reduction in revenue recognition, uh, you know just because of expectation of future losses which may or which may not happen. Any other question? Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Kashif Raza and I'm assistant manager in Pakistan International Airlines. Uh, when you talk about this, all this uh, revision, so we said that the financial, latest financial crisis was the triggering point for all these revisions. And then we have suggested these revisions, they're like expected loss model. And IFRS 9, you know, this expert draft is telling about how to account for this loss. But the fundamental question is still is there how, who, how to foresee that loss. Like taking the example of latest financial crisis, a bank in European Union which has investment in USA, and which, and, uh, a bank in USA, and which had investment in Lehman Brothers. And then Lehman Brothers had a, an investment in subprime mortgage loans. So a person sitting in Europe, how worse he can assume that this is going to happen while foreseeing the losses? You know, is this thing going to really address what all happened in the latest financial crisis? Actually, first of all, the, we have, must understand one thing. The objective is not to... Uh, overcome the crisis through the standards. Standards cannot overcome any financial crisis. The objective is to, because the crisis uh, exposed some weaknesses, the technical weaknesses in the standard, so let's review the accounting standard and overcome those weaknesses uh, after reviewing them on technical grounds. The objective is not to, uh, nor ISB is acknowledging or any accounting standard setter is acknowledging that the crisis was caused by the accounting standards. The crisis was caused by pure economic reasons. And if the accounting standards reflected those economic realities, it doesn't mean the accounting standards was wrong. Actually, there were certain weaknesses which were, uh, which were improved based on recommendations from various uh, stakeholders, but at the same time, uh, for we to expect that this accounting standard is meant to overcome any future financial crisis, so I would say it, is, it will not because it, it should not and it's not intended to do so. And this is not the purpose of any of the accounting standards. So that, that, that is something we must understand. Regarding, yes, complexities in application, you know, when, when you deal with complex financial instrument, complex contracts, so you should be prepared for complex accounting as well. You know, to say that I would deal in instruments, say I would make investment in UK and that SPV will invest in other company and so and so forth, but still I would like to apply a very simple model of accounting is again, <laughs> you know, something in contrast because if you want to deal with complex instruments and complex 
transactions, it will